Hi, I'm Anthony Russell, and this is The Bourbon Chronicles. I have a few different places across this house, and then again, there's an alcohol almost in every type of corner you could find. Um, but this is my little daily sipper bar. You'll see a nice, kind of like very casual mix of things on here. A lot of it is MGP lead. So, but yeah, out of the bottles here, I would say there's one that, again, I always tried to pour for someone if they never had it. And again, few people had it because there's only 200 something of these in the world, 244. But it's this uh, 17 year single barrel, 135 proof rye. This is very old for a rye. And this is very high proof for a rye. And to find a single barrel proofed up that high at that age is wild. But this thing, it does not drink like a 135 at all. This, it probably has the burn of a OWA at most. But again, that extra 30 proof or 20, 28 proof or whatever comes in and it, you, you know that it's there. My math's bad, I've been drinking. But it's, oh my God. So I got, found this at a, it was actually one of my buddies who uh, runs Naptown Bourbon Club. Um, but he's like, hey guys, I got this 17-year uh, Canadian single barrel rye. And we're like, Canadian, what the I don't want that. I don't want it. Gross, why would I want that? Um, but I, you know, I went down and tried it. So we're selling them for like 89 bucks a piece. I tried one sample of them and bought uh, seven. <laughs> so, but, and I've been working through them ever since. But again, for a 17-year near hazmat, near the five off, these are just unheard of anymore. So it's incredible. divine, divine. So if you're a big rye guy, do you think, who, who makes the best rye? Would you say like MGP or Ooh. somebody else? I mean, the best rye is, it, that's that's tough too, right? MGP is widely known for it, again. So a uh, Nashville, or not Nashville, but a uh, select six pick of this, this rye is, oh, for this area, everyone loves them. MGP is known for their rye. They have a really, really, really good rye. One of my favorites though, and it's an absolute sleeper, and then we'll, I'll show you at, this, uh, at the next stop, comes from Knob Creek. But uh, let's go check those out. All right, well now we're in the office. Um, this is my backdrop for work. It usually gets a lot of comments. For the longest time when I first moved into this house, I just kept a straight white background. But I would get so much shit from people about just being a blank nothingness to where my boss was like, you know what, you should really put something on the back. And I kept thinking like, I have no idea what to put on there. I put some gaming things up there and it never really felt right. But everyone knew it was an absolute bourbon degenerate. And one thing I had to have an absolute crap ton of were these Russell's picks. <laughs> so one by one, started moving these out of the bunker and just kind of stacking them up. And then slowly over time, the collection just kind of exploded. So I think I have uh, 38 of these Russell single barrels. And each one of them is either coming from a different city, a different liquor store, a different state, nothing from different countries yet. Let's say uh, somebody's a complete novice or doesn't know much anything about Russell's. Like which, because obviously you have a lot of them. So what's, what's, like, what's the good Rick House? What's the good floor? Like what, what are the tips you can give somebody? When you're jumping into the Russell's world, um, there's a couple things that absolutely stand out. A lot like Four Roses, you want, usually want a, uh, like a high floor. Four is pretty much the staple of what you'll find, but they rotate out the warehouses year by year from what I've, I've learned and just doing some of my digging. Of the ones that I found to be the most interesting, they're usually over the, older than 10 years, and I have an entire shelf of these F6s, highest floor I've ever found, and the oldest bottles I ever found. These are like 11 year, six, eight months, I believe, so close to a 13, but not quite but it still has that, that doesn't have like that oak punch that you got from the batch one of the Russell's 13. Um, but again, there's not a bad Russell's I'll say. Generally, most of these are gonna be very, very good. I would say the only negative one I've ever had came from Benny's, but again, Benny's in Chicago is not particularly known for having good picks. They're not, they're not good, I don't like them. Um, but again, as we move around here, I've had some of the one more interesting ones that I found is again, everything on here is a floor F6. These are like the old, old, older Russell's single barrel picks. Liquor Barn bottom 2021 barrel number 12. It's an absolute heater. This section right here is a little bit of my tatered one. So I found my first tater ever. It also came from a Chicago um, restaurant, but it's called uh, Maple and Ash. First ever one that I ever, I ever found having a sticker, but I was just an absolute fiend. I got addicted to catching these as soon as I got them. And then slowly over time was able to expand them out to find even more tatered ones. This one, I don't know what it is. I haven't seen any Russells that doesn't have a pick on it or a pick label, any information. I'm assuming it's an OHLQ one because I did end up getting it in Ohio. But again, it was one of the first ones I've ever found that was just completely blank on the label. So I mean, technically you could put on whatever you want. This could be a Russell 16 for all I care. I don't know, but it, again, you can do some interesting things with that. 
But I, found, I saw that and I'm like, okay, gotta have it. Again, this, these older Russells, hands down, the, these like 11 year, six month ones, the near Russells 13, out of the Russells picks, absolute fire. If you can ever find them, I don't have any up here that I think have all my ones that are open in, in the, on the next floor, but G4. The G4, I think, is, again, one of the most iconic ones you'll ever find. There's a hidden barrel out there with a Google logo on it. It's called the Google Bottle. That one is well known to be one of the better Russell's picks you can find. What do you think about Gallenstein's picks? Do you, I have a conspiracy theory that they have like the best picks. Um, They've been around for so long and they get the good so, stuff. Well, is that true or not? Or? We, we can definitely talk this more. I think it obviously matters like what they're picking. I have, a lot of people shit on me for this, but I have an Angel's Envy 3G pick that it just absolutely knocked my dick off. It is, it opened my eyes to like, that was my first like, oh shit bourbon moment. But I've re since revisited it and it's still an absolute stunner. But I've also had things from GGG that are absolute shit, right? I've had absolute dog water. So it, it's a very wide spectrum. But I think again, out of the local pick areas, they're, they're in the conversation for sure. For when you're talking specifically Northern Kentucky. Party Source, I think, has gone downhill lately, ever since um, Depths sold over to Liquor Barn and now they use GoPuff. Still, I don't think it comes in at the same quality, even though they can get more. Lately, they've just been a little, uh, little lackluster, but I think outside of like a Wise Guys or like a small, small Unity or a Select Six, I think Select Six does some of the best picks in Northern Kentucky, hands down. Shout out to a Midway Cafe and Rich's Proper, but other than that, yeah, I would say they're, they're in the conversation. Top five, probably. Moving on, yeah, so the bottom row here, um, again, I, I really like the mash bill of Old Forester. I just get a lot of like warm cinnamon notes out of it that is just, just works really well with, with at least how my palette is, is designed. Again, the middle row here is where I started collecting some of my most interesting ones. These are, again, from all over the city, country, all over the state, all over the world in some areas. I have a Moreno Select. So if you know anything about the Old Forester groups, this Moreno's, I would put it pound for pound. It's better than actually most the, the 150 release. I'll, I can definitively say that. But this Moreno's out of Chicago, it's again, specific barrel you need to find. Warehouse I floor one, 132.8 proof. This is probably the best Old Forester that out of the entire lineup. And again, I have some MTS selections. I got some um, Old Forester distillery single release type things, but Nothing comes even close. Nothing comes close to what this Moreno's can do to you. Um, but as we move along, um, the Blanton's wall, again, I don't think there's anything too interesting on there, but I do have two things that absolutely stood out to me as being just, I found them funny. First one is this uh, Louis Vuitton wrapped um, Blanton's honey barrel. So this is an absolute tater job, a total tater work. This is a guy's custom bot or custom barreling. He put a bunch of um, just normal Blanton's into a small little five gallon thing. It was a honey cask and honey bean vanilla cask, took it out, aged it, and then cut up a bunch of uh, you know faux Louis Vuitton things, re-dipped it and bagged it up. I have no desire to really probably drink this, but I bought it just thinking it was absolute, absolutely hilarious. And just, it looks funny on the shelf. So for look, 200 bucks, I, I think it was an interesting enough pickup, but again, I, I can't vouch for the quality of it. <laughs> but hilarious. This one is uh, one of my Blanton's River Barrels. About a lot, year ago, I went to La Maison du Whisky out in Paris. I, I spent way too much money there. But this is one of the only barrels in all of uh, Europe where they not only did a custom um, box for, 2023 release, themed to, uh, I guess, the release of the bar called the Golden Promise, which was is has the largest selection of liquor in all of, all of Europe, just bourbons exclusively. Um, but they also did a custom bag for it. So you'll have the normal, you know, Blanton's gold bag, but it's the Golden Promise uh, really, uh, for to help celebrate the inaugurational opening of that bar. 2023 Blanton's River um, Gold Store Pick. So 103 proof, And Buffalo Trace barrel. create a, a special label for them? Special label, special bag, special box. One of the only ones they've done that with. Yeah, so anytime I, again, anytime I travel, I try to find an exclusive bottle, exclusive piece of liquor from it, when whatever country it is. I was in Japan earlier this year. Again, taco gold, nothing too crazy. Um, but it, to find this in this little hole in the wall store in Kyoto, after just stumbling around, we, we found it absolutely hilarious. But again, love the, the red bag on this one. As you can see, it's not a custom bag, but just a red bag, nothing embroidered on it. But what stood out to us about this one, 
dump date, 420. Ha <laughs> ha, oh, nice. got it. So 420, 23. Um, now this is just, again, the standard Blanton's gold. But the exchange rate over in uh, Japan at this time was just atrocious for them. Great for us. So I think ended up this thing costed cheaper than what they cost here. I think it was in for like 115-ish. And I think they're going for like 130, 140 here when you oh, find okay. them in, at a retail. Nice. But uh, yeah, to have a, the custom gold box with the 420 dump date, absolute no brainer. On the Jack Daniels section, I'm a big Jack Daniels guy, even though it's not bourbon, it, but it still just is near and dear to the heart. I would say the most interesting one is this Jack Daniels single barrel that I got in Aruba. So Aruba is a very, very small country, right? We're talking like 20 miles deep and you know, over the whole length of it. The entire island really only has one liquor distributor. So I was at the, the Four Seasons and this was looking at their bourbon shelf, you know, as one does, saw a Jack Daniels, but they have this little iconic little uh, Romar trading barrel on it. So yeah, obviously I had to get it, but when she, the lady popped it off, the cork just disintegrated and just ruined the whole thing. So she just kept pouring it out for me, which was totally fine. Um, just picking out all the cork. But afterwards I was trying to ask her like, okay, so where, where? I've, I've been to a lot of bars on the island so far and I've never seen a single barrel. So I'm like, where did you guys get this? Reading it, it said Romar Trading Company. So then I, me and my brother who were there at the time went on a hunt. We wanted, had to go find it, right? We had to go find this Romar place. So we're driving around on four wheelers, hunting, hunting for this, couldn't find it, found a liquor store. And they told us that the Romar Trading Co, it's not a liquor store, it's a where liquor distributor. And it was only like about a mile up the road. So we, you know, went up there, got on the four wheelers, and usually when you walk into a distributor, you're thinking like you're walking into like a Western or a, an RDNC. It's a big warehouse essentially, and that's what that was. But there, there's no like liquor laws that prevent the normal person from being able to like buy from it. But so we were just walking around the warehouse, and they're like, "Yeah, just pick whatever you want." And eventually, we were able to stumble across these and bought out the whole row. So it's a, just an older single barrel style in the. Uh, the European bottling style at the time. It opened, it cracked a little bit on the way back, so it was a little bit of a bummer, bummer. but they did come in this cool little metal tin that for like, again, the typical traveler's style of the Jack Daniels. But yeah, this is the first single barrel that I've ever seen outside of the US, so obviously had to have it. But it's, it, so it's not barrel proof, I think that's the only letdown about the whole situation. Um, but it's, uh, again, found it, loved it, and I drank half a bottle at the, uh, Four Seasons, even though I had a bunch of cork in it, but divine. And Russell's yeah, they haven't 13s. been out for long, but you've got to go Those are batch, batch yeah, so those are all the batch two. Um, down in my main bar, I have a couple of the batch ones open. Again, big Russell's fan. I don't love this one. Didn't love the 13. Batch one was really, really good. Batch two, I thought it was eh, eh, eh. But you have to really like oak. The, like, the first sip I had was like an absolute just oak punch to the fucking gut. It's good, it's good. Again, don't get me wrong, it's really good, but I, I don't think it was near the $800 or $700 people were paying when it first dropped. It makes perfect sense when I got those, or they were still like 89, 120. The price now is wild. Campari just jacked up the price for all these. And actually, that's one of the interesting things about the rest of these Russells, I really hedged my bet. Because I'm back in the day, and back in the day, 2022, 2021, you could get these for 65, 75 dollars. Now you can't walk into a store without everyone being 90 dollars for just a standard bottle, and not every bottle is a hundred dollar bottle anymore, right? Um, but yeah, so I haven't bought any of these since they jacked up the price. But I think I got a pretty decent bunker just in case. Um, but this is the main bar area now. Um, this is also the, I'm renovating this house broadly, right? But this is the, uh, the first room that I n needed to flip over myself. Um, and it's, it's, it's come a long way. If you could imagine, it all used to be just paint white with just like the crappiest, ter most, uh, uh, terrible tile. Um, but then just kind of built this all up uh, from scratch. But this is, this is the bunker. This is where I keep some of the more interesting things, uh, def for sure. Um, this is where I got all my security cameras and everything watching too. So it's the, the, just the nicer area. Um, so we're moving through, uh, this, there's not really much organization I would say to it. I have an entire shelf of MGP things, even though I have a, some older 15 year MGPs up here. These are my quote unquote unicorn bottles. So just the more interesting things I've collected across the years. 
an entire wall essentially of different Weller picks. This is a uh, like the uh, OWAs, the foolproofs, the Weller 12s. I think I got a white label back there. We got Towley. Don't, don't forget to bring a towel. Got to have a towel. <laughs> um, yeah, some CYPBs. I have a lot of these. I don't love them particularly. This OWA, I would take over a foolproof any day of the week. But moving through, the unicorn shelf is usually where I like to spend the most time any time somebody comes in. Um, and again, these will all eventually be drunk, absolutely. But it's about finding the right moment to pop them. Well, it's almost all of them. The, the, there's one up here that I'll pull out here in a second that I'll probably, I, I will have no desire to drink personally. I paid way too much for it, but um, it's, it's just one of the, the more iconic ones for sure. But before I get to there, some stories around these. The first, I would say, I, I didn't know it at the time, but I would say like the most interesting bottle that my brother just, t my brother was an absolute DJ and he has I, probably three X more than I have in this all, in this entire world. Um, but he sent me a, a email during COVID. He's like, hey, you need to go get one of these right now. And it's the Maker's Mark Community Batch. So this was, again, back during COVID. And the story, from what I remember, is back during COVID, um, there was a number of high-end restaurants that pooled together to donate their Maker's Mark bottles together to put a sit into a single batch. And all those, those areas are listed here. Locally, this is places like Jeff Ruby's. I think there was a... Um, select six entity in there but it's a, just a huge list of all these different little stores or like big name restaurants essentially everyone donated their 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 picks from makers because everyone gets a picks from makers right that's like the most common pick in any restaurant but they don't donate them together to put into something they called a community batch and from what I understand this is the first time makers mark has ever done not just a custom blend but a custom engraved laser again this is back in the 2020 uh, peak COVID to donate everything to this community batch. So the whole thing is to support the Lee Initiative, which I understand was just kind of like helping small restaurants stay afloat during that, that time. But I've had this one time at um, Japs before Molly Wellman ended up selling this place, selling it out to um, the next person. It's a really good makers. Like it's a really, really good makers. And if you look at the list of like who would have signed up for it, you can kind of see these are some decent pickers for sure. So there's only again, 7,500 of them and, and a lot of them have been drank. But the first time anyone, I guess, from what I read and understood is that they came together to create a single batch to support an initiative like that. Uh, moving on to kind of other interesting ones. Pappy Van Winkle's GTS, they're, they don't, uh, I don't believe to be as interesting and iconic as some people hunt them down to be. But uh, this guy, out of all the bottles I have, this will be the one that I'll probably never open. Uh, and it's a uh, Michter's 20. Oh, wow. So <laughs> I walked into a liquor store um, and the dude saw me looking around He's like, hey, so uh, what do you, you, you could tell I was looking for the bourbon, right? That, it was very obvious. He's like, so what are you looking for? I'm like, well. Do you have 20 grand burning a pot? I got, uh, <laughs> he's, he's like, well, I got Blanton's and the things back here. I'm like, no, I'm not really interested in Buffalo. I'm looking for like unique Four Roses, unique Michters, unique Old Forested things. He's like, oh, Michters, you say? I have something, hold on. Goes behind the counter, pulls it out and just puts this on the, on the, on the, the counter in front of me. I'm like, oh, I didn't know what it was at the time. Honestly, I had to look it up. But he's like, well, it's $2,500. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, is, is it now? Uh, so I, I again, didn't quite know, so I called my brother. I'm like, hey, th there's this, uh, this bottle in front of me. This dude says he wants $2,500 for it. Is it a deal? He's like, what is it? Send him a picture. He's like, yes, buy that, buy that immediately. <laughs> he's like, does he have anything else? Does he have anything else? So I kept asking and kept prying. He's like, well, you know, I got this other thing. So he pulls out a King of Kentucky, and he pulls out a, um, a oh, I forget what the other one was. It was like a nicer Kentucky owl. Long story short, I spent a lot of money at that place, um, but this is one of those few bottles that, again, even though I got it at a decent price, it was still a, it was still quite a bit. Um, I was able to talk him down because I was doing buying a bunch of things at the same time, but I haven't even actually opened it. I have what is the, it worth on the secondary right now? You know? Right now, um, yeah, see, so it's still in the the plastic, the foam wrap. Right now, well, did you check? Is the bottle still? It there? is. Yeah, it is. It, it's. It. Yeah, it was definitely in there. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so I've not actually, actually opened it deep, deep, deep into it. Um, so when I bought it, I think it peaked out at sixty-five hundred, give or take. 
I've seen, again, the 20 go anywhere from 38 to 10, 5. Depending on year and batch, this one, 687 of them. So, I mean, a decent and more than I think they normally do. But she's, uh, I think this is the, the one I got insured. <laughs> a lot of things here. Big Russell's guy, so I found one of these a while back. One of the, it's like Russell's version of, um, I wanna say the OFC. It's super low proof, so you don't normally see some of Russell's bottle at a 44.75, so sub 90. But I have had this one, a lot of cherry notes to it, but uh, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't love it, I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm more of a bit, I, I want more proof to these things than I think is typically in here. But again, they come with this nifty little wood box and the, with the tasty notes and you know, it's like their, their elevated guy, elevated bottle. So they have this one at a bunch of different proofs. Every release or dated, age dated thing will come out a little different one. The 96 is much, I think it's closer to that 110 era um, that it just proofed out differently. But this is a 16 year. So it's a just much more, much more spunk to it than you normally get from a, a typical Russell's. But again, being low proof, it's, it, it just, it's, it leaves much to be desired in that area. I am also a uh, big, big mixers guy on the barrel proofs. Um, so I was really excited to go do one of the, the self, oh, self the self pours. Yeah. Pours, yeah. yeah. They're really hard to get, oddly enough. It's so, it's, but there's nothing special about it. There's, this is not any special release version of it. There's just a unique limited bottling and that's what people fiend for. But yeah, again, I, the barrel strength of it is f fantastic. Great, great drinker. Um, they do two versions of it, the, the bourbon and the, the rye, this is the bourbon one. But again, is this, have, this, should this have any secondary value to me? Probably not. Will I ever drink this one? Probably not, just because I really like this as just like a keepsake. Great, great packaging on this thing. And have you been to any barrel picks? I've not been to a barrel pick. I used to, back when I worked in the ad agency world, one of our main clients was a company called um, Crown Liquors. So they had 38 or so um, liquor stores in the Indianapolis area. So be, but before I understood what this entire industry was, they took us on a, uh, a bottle pick down to Four Roses. Um, but this was back in 2015-ish, 2016-ish. And um, the, the owners of Crown Royal at the time, had, Crown Liquors at the time, had a, um, a monopoly essentially on all Four Roses for the state of Indiana. So they were the only ones bringing them into the state. So they took us and they were buying 10 barrels at the time, which again, that's unheard of as far as I'm aware of the typical for roses these days. But they lined up just, you know, 50 different barrels for us to sample. I had no idea what was going on with the, the bourbon back at the time, but they were rolling out, I, I, way I understand it, just nothing but sixes and ones on the tiers. But I've never been drunker in my life uh, at a work event than filming this tasting. And we're, again, we're just there shooting a bunch of content for their, their Facebook channel. But my God. So before you're into bourbon, you're just like, no, this tastes great with some, with some cola. It's like, oh man, I'm getting, they're just telling me all these notes they're getting. It's like, oh, I'm getting cherry. I'm getting these, this wood. I'm getting this vanilla bean, the cinnamon, the spice, this fruit. I'm like, I'm getting drunk. Just crushing. I'm getting hot ethanol. Crushing, <laughs> crushing. Yeah, every single one of them. Um, but yeah, that, that's those. Getting into more other interesting things, I think one of my favorites that's an absolute sleeper that I've been bunkering actually for some time. And I'm not a big Willet guy, but I cannot get enough of these blacktop Willets. I have just, every time one of these things comes up in the market, I'm like, I, I, I just buy it almost immediately. So it, the numbers are starting to get up there. I'm getting a pretty good little section of them but they don't have a huge secondary demand, but I will buy every single one of these. I see every single time. It is a Willet rye, right? I'm gonna double check here. It's been a minute since I looked at it. Yes, Willet bourbon with a MGP rye. Just phenomenal, phenomenal pour. See, I act like I know what I'm talking about. I just really like the taste of it, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, ooh, you gotta give them that pop to and chug that thing. Mm, mm, mm. Well, it used to retail at or you know for you know very high two three hundred dollars a piece, but 
And then the secondary was always like $100 a year on the Willet. I don't know. I don't know if it drinks like that. These I'm finding, I mean, some places want like $200, $300 a piece for them. I don't think that's what they're worth, I'm, but I pick them up anytime I see them for about that 120 So if anyone's holding, holler at your boy. When it comes to Eagle Rares, they're good. I like Eagle Rare a lot, but there's one, this pick, I, I, it makes no sense. So we did a, a bottling of this pick. This is from my brother's store because he worked in the industry for a while as well which helped get some of these things. Uh, the, this, the pick is called Jimmy's Pick Number One. We did a lineup of Normal Eagle Rare, Jimmy's Pick Number One, and Eagle Rare 17. Again, just because he had Unreal Access, we were just taking polls at Eagle Rare 17. Wild videos back in the day. I can send you some B-roll of that if you want. But this bottle, it makes no sense how good this is. We put it up to the three other picks, and time and time again, it just, it tastes exactly like Eagle Rare 17. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. So I've been slowly trying to accumulate those. I only have three, but out of the out of the world of Eagle Rare picks, I've never experienced anything come close to what that one tastes like. And Eagle Rare Seventeen is controversial as far as people think. As far as the B Tech uh, lineup, the B -tech lineup it, yeah. Is it is it one of the, like one of the weaker ones? I would say it's. I, I think a retail it's well priced. I think it would personally hold its weight at $800. I think it makes more sense on the price point for that one. I think that, again, just looking at that lineup there, the Sazerac 18 is by far the worst one. Hands down, it is the most disappointing bottle I've ever experienced. When you're looking at the market rate versus what the actual quality of the spirit is that you're drinking, Again, few things are worth $2,000 to drink. I mean, personally, that's why I've never drank some of those bottles. It's like, eh, not, nothing should technically, nothing consumable is going to be that good. It's going to be disappointing. But I would say Sazerac 18 is definitely one of those that just it leaves much to be desired. I really love Handy. I really like GTS. I really like Eagle. Uh, or even King of Kentucky? One, is it worth I'm way, if I'm way more into the King of Kentucky's for sure. The key, it's like a better version of these 150s that just are, again, another, another, another really good bottle of that, that lineup and that varietal. When I first had this one, uh, I was still very new to bourbon. Very, very new. And I honestly, to this day, I think this one still drinks a little hotter than I would typically look for. But King of Tucky, to me, drinks like this, but just more of a cooler, like, cooler back end like a good 15 year MGP where it just kind of cools and oily coats your entire mouth to where you're not gonna be able to taste anything else for the rest of the day because it's so fucking good. This is just a spicier version of that. So these I think you can find now for roughly 350, but then the year after they did those, <laughs> they did a, a barrel or a, bur a beer release of it. So I haven't had this one yet, but all of these, Go again, the Goose Island Bourbon County ones, just absolute, chocolate, thick, delicious bourbon pour. Now you can get hammered off of a, you know, a single. Other interesting things, I mentioned earlier, my uh, my love for rye. Oh yeah, Knob Creek. Oh, those are the good ones. This, this is that gas. This is the rye that people don't understand how good this thing is. And we're gonna, we're gonna open one up just because I'd, I'd love these and I needed an open one. And again, I'd love you guys to try it, but nothing, <laughs> very kind, no, no, nothing like, so should be here that's kind of, these are nondescript bottles. You would see this, you would generally pass it over. It got actually a lot of bad reviews in the broader, just kind of like bourbon ecosystem. Gallenstein, again, getting back to the early question, at a time had these on sale for $20 a piece, $19.99, no limit. And this is one of their special kind of like limited release things. But we bought one, we tried one. And we back and bought five cases. What of year these. was this? Five cases. Yeah, this is um, good question. It was COVID era. I want to say 2020, 2021. But we're gonna we're gonna pop one of these just because I've been looking for a reason to pop one, and this this feels like good reason. So we're gonna hit him with that little pop tua. Pop tua and bottle chug that thing. Cheers. Mm. 
Mm, 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 mm. It just, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense how good this one drinks. So it's again, not like a ridiculous bottle. I think you can find these usually 75 bucks a piece on the secondary. Well, I just noticed it says twice barreled. Twice barreled. One I've been working to like rekindle my bunker for. Cannot get enough of this. Again, it's very, it's, it's not a, like a stunner bottle to most people, but something about this just perfectly nails my palate. This is the one I get the most flack for, <laughs> for liking. I get a lot of shit talked about me on this one, but I, I don't care. This, this bottle, I will die on this hill. N most Angel's Envies are not good. Let's get out, come here and say it right out of the gate. Most of them are just very underwhelming. But this 2021 release, 2021 release from GGG, the Gallenstein 2021 release of Angel's Envy, their first pick, I believe it was their first pick, just, this is a honey barrel. It makes no sense at all how good this bottle is. So I'm saving these two for a special occasion. Again, it's nothing that's, it, it's, it's, for our friend group, we, we ended up buying like 10 of these because they're just, it's wild. These are, I don't, I don't know what else to say. It's a perfect mix of MGP style bourbon, but it has a really warm honey back end. The, I think it's, the port is doing some wild things to this, but I cannot get enough of this. This is the only, this is the only barrel. I will not, the rest of them I've tried, they've all been terrible. Every other Angel's Envy pick, the most recent Galaxy picks, no, no good. Whatever this one is, this is absolute gas. I will not vouch for any other Angel's Envy, but this one I can, I will die on this hill. It's got game. Ha ha! I met, Rus I met Jimmy in 2021 and he signed this barrel head for me. Oh yeah. So we've got, this is a Russell, this is one of their again, normal picks and from, from Jimmy signed. When I mentioned earlier, I stocked up on these 17 year eyes. <laughs> I got four left of this that are just, it, it again, try, you gotta try some rye here. Well, let me finish this one. I'll, yeah, try, yeah. I'll try a drop. Yeah, for sure. sure. But again, this is the one, the 135 proof. So this was the one is the gas, it, but it does not drink like 135. But what's, what's interesting is I also have a 16 year version of it and a, another 17 year version of it. All these bottles release in the same kind of batch. It, it, it's everything you'd want in a rye. You get green fruit. It's not overly spicy, but there is a, like a subtle, like all spice flavor in it, but the rye just uniquely comes through. That just uh, it wakes you up, keeps you going. So this guy is known again for picking like his own good, really good MGPs. So he, when he went up to, or he didn't go to Lawrenceburg, he went up to Canada to go find these. He brought his, all his like MGP crew. It's like, this is what we're looking for. Because they told him we're gonna get these 16, 17, 18, 15 year old barrels. And they did a huge drop of these across all the Indianapolis bourbon groups. Because Indianapolis has the same type of bourbon culture that Kentucky and Ohio does, where again, you have a bunch of de degenerates, but they just don't have the ability to get the same type of stuff that this area does. So somebody posted all three of these for sale. I bought these uh, as open bottles. Somebody posted all of them for sale for, I think it was like $50. So it was 50 years of bourbon for 50 bucks. This thing was full. This one was worth like 150, 200 to, to me alone. And to have be able to try these other two up next to it was fun. And I was like, all right, I'll, I'll jump on this. I'll take the gamble. We, we trusted the guy. These are mid, <laughs> these two are mid at best. But this 17 year just uh, out of the gate, iconic, stunna. I travel a lot. Um, and like I said, when I travel, I try to find a unique spirit from whatever country I'm visiting. Ideally, it's a single barrel. So when I was in Colombia uh, about eight, two years ago, I went through a big like hunt spree there. Again, the exchange rate was like 5,000 to one. So, but within their mall, I found this like really, really, really nice liquor store. And in the middle, in this huge glass case was sitting this bottle. When I first looked at it, I saw the vintage was 2008. And I'm like, oh, it's when I graduated high school. That's dope. But I, w I went through probably like 15, 16 different liquor stores in Bogota at this time, trying to find something that was a single barrel. I wanted something unique to the area. So it's gonna be a one of one from that release. I go in this very high end place and I finally found it. And this is on like a fashion mall. This isn't like a really, really nice area. So I find this thing and I was just like, oh damn, what's going on here? 
it's so there's like it's spinning around in a case as like it's all glass has like a light shining down on it and i start reading about it so not only is it a single barrel and again rum is way bigger in latin america than it is in the u.s but this is a single barrel rum that was aged in Colombian coffee bean barrels. So I'm like, this is exactly what I'm looking for. If I'm looking for something that's gonna perfectly capture the spirit of the place of where I've just visited, it was this. So I asked them how much, and they tell me it was $389,000. <laughs> However, Bogota dollars. Is it Bogota dollars? <laughs> so these are Bogota dollars. So when I run the exchange rate, it ends up being 89 bucks. <laughs> so I'm like, I'll take it. But it, it felt, it was a just, it was hilarious. They were, they were very excited they, because they finally made a sale. And again, this is like their, their crown jewel. And it, again, I buy their crown jewel for less than I paid for some Ubers before. But it's still, <laughs> I thought it was funny. But again, it's still a uh, 2000, it's the year that I graduated high school, a single barrel cast strength rum was the other piece. And most things you see overseas are going to be down to the, the wild arm down like the 80 proof top area. But to find something at cast strength from the year I graduated high school that was also aged inside of those coffee bean barrels. So it's going to be a rum, coffee, vanilla thing. I was like, this is, this is it. I have to have it. Um, well, yeah, when I went to Paris, I stocked up on these. Oh. These Weller 12s are all over there. Again, nothing special about it other than it's just it's just normal Weller. It comes in this box, but you'll find these for 35 euros. There it is sitting, like just an entire shelf of them. No limit. And so I'm like, oh. Years, 35 yeah, no, I noticed No the... limit. And so I, I just would buy the whole shelf when it was like 160 bucks. I'm like, this is a phenomenal deal. <laughs> what I'm hunting next is the uh, the Year of the Dragon. So they did one of these specifically for Japan that's themed to the Year of the Dragon release. Again, nothing unique about it other than just it comes with the special dragon uh, seal on it. I think those are some of my more interesting things. I have some other ones that I personally like a lot that, I mean, the bottle of them itself is not that good. <laughs> but a lot, a lot of people shit on good times for good reason. It's MGP that they put a um, bunch of flavoring in. They say they age it with all these barrels, but the barrels, you can tell that there's extra flavor and all this kind of uh, you know, shit added to it. But this was one of the early barrels. So it, it, it's, it's actually way better than a lot of things that are released. This is one of the admin releases from the local groups. The only reason I, I got this, like sniped it immediately, was coming in for the tater sticker on the back. Yeah. It's toasted, honey toasted, it tastes better. So again, I've worked in advertising my entire life, but this this sticker was one again. This was one of the reasons I got into it, and that the, the season one pilot of this is why we, we we toast our tobacco because it it adds the flavor and that you could say anything you want in advertising back in those days. But when everyone's getting you know eviscerated for your health benefit, hit them with what makes you unique because everyone else is saying the same thing. That there, and while it wasn't unique, they were the first ones to say it, so they were able to own that brand. But I'd, again, I love the it's honey, honey toasted to add flavor. But this one actually is good; it really is good. But this is why you don't like good times, is if you look at the light in this, and this is where you want to like it really close and see it. I'm about oh, to, it well, I'm about to turn it upside down. You're gonna see all the bullshit kind of come through it. Oh, you can, yeah. The flavorings and the colors. That, that's how you know it's not. It's, it's not, not straight. Yeah, it's not just the age of the barrel itself. So the fact that it's that this thing is sat for probably two years now <laughs> without shaking it up. So you you saw a really iconic like deep level pour of that cloudiness of it. But even so now that's all mixed within. It's not as clear as you would expect from a normal bourbon to be. But even so, it's flavored. I bought it for the tater sticker, and I bought it secondary, but so it wasn't as bad as some of the people got got on it. This one was a good pour. It was it was it was a good pour, but don't expect it to be the good bourbon. It's more of a good cocktail. It's it's a mix. It's a mixed ca catering thing. I think that they position themselves as a co a mixed cocktail rather than a premium bourbon or not even premium bourbon like a, a good bourbon. They would do a lot, lot better just on the positioning of where they're trying to put themselves in the market. I have a lot of Michter's Ten Rise that I'd love to sip on. I was able to. I have really good luck That's finding these. That's the fanciest Taylor sipper I've ever seen. I have life. really good luck finding these. So I found this place in Kentucky um, a while back, and that's, I have like a bunker of these back there. They had like seven of them, but they. <laughs> on, the, on the shelf I walk in and this is one of those stores where you see like the really high tier shit behind the behind the counter right you know it's gonna be overpriced because you're just seeing when it's back there you, you just get the vibe you know that feeling 
But I walk down their normal rye aisle, and I, I see on the, on the shelf a ton, a ton of these Michter's tins just sitting there. And, you know, I'm kind of meandering around. The guy comes up and talks to me. He's like, hey, so you look for anything in particular? I'm like, well, so I'm from Ohio, and I'm looking for, you know, rare bottles I can't normally find there. He's like, oh, yeah, let me show you some things. Like, I like good bourbon myself. I love good whiskey, but, I, you know, I can never get the good stuff. I can never find it. So he's, he's, he's trying to walk me through the aisle, and, you know, I'm letting him do his thing. I'm curious to see you know, what he's talking about. He takes me over to Dickel and starts just going like deep down this spree of like how great Dickel is and this is a special release and things you can never find it. But then right behind us is an entire shelf of two rows deep of these Michter's 10 ryes. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, what do you know about those? He's like, yeah, they're, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rye, it's, it's $48. So I'm like, wait, uh, I'm sorry, it's what? It's how much? He's like, yeah, he's looking at the, uh, the, uh, the price tag on it, it's $48. <laughs> But there's so they have you know two rows of these things. There was like a, it was two, just it was a, the wildest thing. And so I'm like, are, are you are you sure? Is there a limit on these? He's like, no, no. If it's, if it's out here, there's no limit. You can just you can buy all you want. So I'm like, well, okay. Well, I can't find this. I'll, I'll just take I'll take this whole row. So I got six of them. Walked up to the counter. <laughs> I'm thinking, hey, these are forty eight dollars a piece. <laughs> Go me, right? Just going down like, hee 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 hee, right? Um, get up to the counter. He goes to scan it. Scan. Nothing happens. Scan. Nothing happens. Scan. He's like, oh, I don't know what's going on. I'm like, oh, well, you mean you want me to go with the label? It says it was forty eight dollars. He's like, yeah, yeah, I know. No, don't worry about it. I'll just, I'll just enter it in manually. So he goes in, <laughs> enters the, the the price in manually, hits send, and I I walk out of that place for I was six of them for two hundred dollars, <laughs> two hundred and some change. Wow, you back up the truck. I was like, what is going on? But yeah, he just, <laughs> he, the price was just the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. So I, I'm, I'm like, well, obviously I need to buy this entire fucking shelf. I wonder if they ever realized like, whatever happened to my unicorns? That's, I mean, that, that's one of those things, right? So it's like, I got out for, with six of these bottles, what it normally cost to buy one and a half. <laughs> so I, 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 I was very, <laughs> I was very, I was very happy to find all, all of these. Um, they're a pain in the ass to open, though. I don't love opening it because it's <laughs> look, look, look at that wax job. I had to get a knife to actually get into that fucker. I was shocked. I was shocked at how just much straight wax they put in. You thought that uh, that that um, that the Knob Creek we opened exploded. This thing doesn't. So the wax has like a higher elasticity or some shit. I don't know. You tell me, but it's um, it leaves much to be desired in terms of one of my first. Uh, I find it as one like one of my first like heists or not even a heist, but just like a really good bottle that I found that I was like really fucking excited to, to walk into. It's this one, and I have a, an Eagle Rare counterpart. I went out to 2022, 2021. Went out to Seattle for work. Um, I was going to the PAX West, which is a big gaming conference for like tabletop games and stuff like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rent myself a car and I just wanna go drive the Pacific Northwest. I haven't been up to that area. I've done a lot of West Coast, but I've never been to that side. So I wanted to go explore. So after all the work stuff, I got, got in the car and I just took off and I just started heading north towards Canada. But on the way there, I stopped at like every little, little liquor store along the way. Seattle prices are wild. They're wild. They have this like 20% sin tax on like any liquor or anything fun that comes out of that area. So it was, it, everything there just is like wildly expensive, even the farther you get away from Seattle. But up in this place called Woodenville, and you might know Woodenville from the Woodenville distillery that has Woodenville bourbon there, it was this like little hole in the wall. The entire store is probably no bigger than this bar. Like th that's the entire store, but it's in a ski town, this very quaint, small little ski town. I walk in. And I see a uh, Buffalo Trace and Eagle Rare there. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Uh, I've been hunting something. I'll, I'll jump into these. But they happen to be picks as well. And again, there's not, there's not much other in the story than, than the fact that it, he, the owner there, he's like a very sweet old man. He pops open a bottle. He's like, here, you want to try some? You're, you're not from here. I'm like, yeah, let's, let's fucking go. And this one is a cherry explosion. I've never had a more cherry flavored Buffalo Trace or cherry note forward. There's like a little red spritiness to it that I equate to a cherry flavor. 
This one's just gonna be your typical Eagle Rare pick. Nothing iconic, not like the Jimmy's pick number one earlier. But I just, this is one of the couples that I've had from that Seattle region that I've just always kept near and dear to my heart. It's some of my first finds in, uh, in the bourbon space. But again, just being a unique pick while having to walk in and boom, Eagle Rares. <laughs> I bet you wish you would have bought more, right? He only did one. He would only let me do one, and I was fine with that, honestly. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, that's why he has them. Because it, it was allocated. You know, super allocated thing. And actually, also when I was in Seattle, so on that same trip, because I tend to do this a lot for trips, <laughs> another unbranded, unpicked, unlabeled bottle. So maybe this happens more than I thought it did, but it, this one is a... Uh, another one of the four roses that just uniquely didn't have a label so i've been thinking about what should i put on here i almost want to label it myself to be like my special my special little treat the the special tater bottle but i don't have a i don't have an idea i don't have a name so look if you have uh if you have some interesting ideas of what i should put this in throw it in the comments of this one because i'd love i'm, I'm going to be watching these videos for sure 